Good afternoon, this is Josh with Pump Supply Incorporated. Uh, this is a brief introduction to the Milton Roy Macroy G series diaphragm metering pump. The Macroy G is a mechanically actuated diaphragm metering pump. That means that the diaphragm here, the Teflon diaphragm, is being acted directly on by a connecting rod attached to the gear train here in the back. Uh, that compares to a hydraulic diaphragm where you'd be using hydraulic oil to actually move the diaphragm. Here you're using mechanical force applied through the center of it uh, to move it back and forth. The pump here uh, has a mechanical adjustment, manual capacity adjustment here, a micrometer, 10 turns between 0 and 100%. Uh, it's strictly a percentage scale compared to your name, nameplate capacity. So if you have a pump that has a capacity of 300 gallons an hour, 10% would be 30 gallons an hour. Uh, this here is a locking knob that locks the manual adjustment here in place. Uh, that way it won't walk out during normal operation. Uh, just loosen that knob. Capacity adjustment can be set. Tighten it back down. And you're all set to go. Uh, as far as the liquid end goes, uh, liquid end could be stainless steel or it could be a very uh, variety of non-metallic materials. You have a suction and a discharge check here. The check valve bodies are symmetrical, so uh, it's a straight thread. Uh, they are reversible. So this one here on the suction side, you can see it has an arrow here pointing into the suction one. The same check valve body on the discharge side pointing out with the arrow there. Uh, the check valves are serviceable, so when it comes time to repair them, you'll get a repair kit that has a ball and a seat in it. Pop the ball and the seat out, don't throw this check valve body away. Uh, the check valve body here seals against the inside of the head with an O-ring. Then on the other side, there is a union nut and union end that also seals with an O-ring. Here's your NPT connection for the discharge. Uh, same thing, NPT, disc, uh, NPT connection on the suction. That's Teflon diaphragm. This, is, this particular one's a PVC head with a PVC diaphragm plug there. Behind the diaphragm, since it's mechanical, there's no hydraulic fluid back here. Uh, there's a black rubber oil seal and then the Teflon diaphragm. So your process fluid is all over here. This is just an empty space. There's your oil seal here and then gear oil back here that's lubricating the gear train. Uh, on most of the pumps, there's also a weep hole. This cutaway, it's been cut off here. There'll be a weep hole oftentimes with a hose barb here. So if one of these ruptures, either the diaphragm leaks and you see process fluid coming out, or the uh, oil seal ruptures, you can see oil coming out of that weep hole there. You can tell that there's an issue and needs to be serviced. In the manual, Milton Roy recommends that the diaphragm get changed about every 4,000 hours. The repair kit includes the diaphragm and the oil seals. You usually do both at the same time, along with the check valve balls and seats and O-rings. Do that whole change and you're good to go. Uh, capacity adjustment, you know, start up and running. All you really need to do is flood the pump through, uh, you know, vent it on the discharge side to so make sure you got process fluid all through the head. You got oil in this side of the pump here. You're pretty much ready to go. Uh, if the pump is airbound or airlocked, if you get a slug of air in here and discharge pressure is preventing this from getting cleared out, vent the discharge side, allow process fluid to come through and the pump will take right off. Uh, there's not too much other process piping considerations. Since this is a mechanical diaphragm pump, there's no internal pressure relief valve, so it does need an external pressure relief of some sort here on the discharge side. Uh, otherwise, if you block in the discharge, it'll overpressurize and you can rupture the diaphragm that way. Uh, so it does need an external pressure relief valve. Troubleshooting, there's really not too much to troubleshooting it. If the pump stops pumping, generally your first solution is always going to be open up the discharge side, open up a vent over here, make sure that it's not airbound. Uh, like I said, if you see leakage coming out here between the diaphragm and, uh, or, or the oil seal coming out that weep hole here from that space, you see that. Uh, otherwise, you know, oil changes here in the hydraulic and that's about all you really need for that. Uh, your particular, the new particular ones, this is our cutaway. This one's been around for quite a while, so the casing is shaped a little bit differently, but the internal principles are still the same. And that pretty well sums it up. Um, as far as running it too, I'm going to check the torque on the head bolts here prior to startup and then after about one week of operation. Uh, it's not a lot of torque. I think for the smaller ones, it's, you have to look at the manual. It's, you know, on the order, it's inch pounds. It's uh, 90 inch pounds or 125 inch pounds, I think, depending on the size. Uh, but you check it at first startup and then check it after a week after it's been running. Since it's a non-metallic head, you can get a little plastic creep uh, or deformation as it's running. So it's always good to check it after it's been running for a little while. Uh, but otherwise, that's about it. If you have any questions, please give us a call, 847-841-7867. Thanks much.